Welcome to week three of the SEC Game of the Week. And man, guys, I've got a game I can't make my mind up on. Uh, it, I have went back and forth on this game uh, for the last 48 hours. Um, this is going to be a super competitive football game. And these teams, um, the strength against strength in this, in this game between LSU and South Carolina um, – LSU is worse than I thought they would be this year, and South Carolina is much better than I thought they were, they would be this year. So this is going to be an interesting game. Um, it's going to be played uh, this Saturday, September 14th at 12 o'clock in Columbia, South Carolina. You've got the 16th-ranked LSU Tigers playing uh, South Carolina Gamecocks, and it should be a really good game. So let's talk about the strength of schedule. Both these teams have played two games this year. LSU is 1-1, one one, South Carolina is 2-0. Oh. LSU has the ninth hardest schedule. They have played a pretty competitive um, schedule so far. They opened the season with a loss to USC in Las Vegas, uh, which really surprised me. I still think they were the better team in that game, and they let that one slip away. South Carolina is 26th. Um, they absolutely demolished Kentucky last week at Kentucky. Kentucky was a dark horse team I had this year that was going to win about eight games, um, which is pretty good season in this SEC that has 16 teams. That's a uh, it's very very good. So, uh, but I don't think they're going. Kentucky's going to get to eight wins now. But that's that's what I thought they would do this year. But so LSU last week they played Nichols and they won 44 to 21. And so, this is a game where it, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Uh, this is at South Carolina. Um, LSU has, the, you know, the two best tackles in football, in my opinion. Uh, they're going to be drafted probably in the top 15 picks. Both these guys will be gone. Uh, they're very, very good at pass blocking. But I'm going to get into this more. This offensive line is not that good at run blocking. Uh, LSU is favored by seven points in this game. Uh, and I think LSU, they got a huge uh, favor by getting this game at 12 o'clock instead of like 7.30 or even 3.30 in Williams-Brice. Because coming from a Tennessee fan, we have played at South Carolina a lot over the years, and we have left that stadium with a loss. Now, a lot of those Tennessee teams weren't that good. But anyway, it's still a very tough place to win. Um, so anyway... Let's talk about the players in this game that you need to be looking out for and um, who are going to have a big impact in this game. Garrett Nussmeyer, um, he's got 610 yards this year. He has eight TDs. He's got the 10th QBR ranking right now in college football at 86.7. LSU has a lot of issues, but Garrett Nussmeyer, in my opinion, is not one of those issues. He's been very efficient. Uh, I think he just has one interception this year. Uh, and that offensive line has done a great job at pass blocking for him. He's not been sacked once this year. Um, for South Carolina, Lenore Sellers, this guy's a freshman. He's got 280 yards, two TDs. He's got the 113th QBR at 30.3. So LSU has the clear advantage in the quarterback department. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this game plays out with those two players. Uh, for LSU, Harold Perkins, he's definitely their best defensive player. He's got 11 tackles. He's a junior, <clears throat> and uh, he's been all SEC every year he's been there. For South Carolina, Dylan Stewart, this is a freshman defensive end, and when you look at tape of him, I just can't believe he's a freshman. Uh, I said this uh, earlier today in my video. I said he's Javadian Clowney uh, 2.0. Uh, he is just a terror on um, quarterbacks. But he's got six tackles and he's got two and a half sacks, just two games into the season. Uh, for LSU, Kyron Lacey, he's got 159 yards, four TDs. He's an all SEC caliber receiver. Um, so uh, South Carolina is going to have to know where he's lined up every snap. Uh, the other guy, the other end or defensive end for South Carolina is. Uh, Kyle Kennard, he's got five tackles. He leads the team in sacks with three and a half sacks. South Carolina's got a pair of defensive ends that's among the best in the SEC, and they will get after your quarterback. Uh, just go ask Brock Vandegrift for Kentucky. Um, so let's break these two teams down in this game. 
the uh, and they match up. It's it's really weird because each strength is going against strength in this game. So total offense for LSU two games into this year, they're 66, uh, 400 yards a game is what they're averaging offensively. Uh, South Carolina defensively, their total defense, they're 30th. They're allowing 240 yards a game. Uh, scoring offense. LSU 66, 32 points a game. Uh, I thought LSU would be much higher than that. I thought they'd be closer to 40 points a game, uh, but they're not. Uh, scoring defense for uh, South Carolina's 35th. They're only allowing 13 points a game. Uh, they've got off to a really good start defensively, and I think South Carolina fans have to be very excited about their defense so far. Rushing offense, and this is what's killed LSU. They're 116th in rushing the football. Uh, they had 89 yards. Uh, they got 89 yards is what their average right now on the year. They did not even get to 100 yards rushing against Nichols last week. Uh, if they do not run the ball better at South Carolina, they will not win this game. They cannot be that one-dimensional. South Carolina's rush defense is 68th, so it's not like they're that stellar. They're giving up. They're allowing 124 yards on the ground. Um, pass offense, um, LSU is 22nd, 311 yards. So if they have one strength on this team, if they can throw the ball around the football field uh, with some good receivers and a good quarterback. Pass defense, South Carolina's 19th, only allowing 121 yards. So it's going to be interesting to see the offensive line for LSU, which is extremely good at protecting the quarterback, going against a defensive line that can really get after the quarterback. I cannot wait to really watch that uh, live on Saturday. Um, now, let's look at the, the LSU defense versus the South Carolina offense. LSU's total defense is 90th, allowing 371 yards. Um, and South Carolina's total offense is 122nd. They are, uh, they are uh, they're averaging 270 yards a game right now offensively. So uh, offensively and uh, for South Carolina, they're, they're just – that's piss poor. That's not good. And uh, they're going to have to get a lot better when they get into SEC play more uh, of doing better than that. They beat Kentucky, but when they play some more – quality opponents like LSU this week and so on and so on. They're going to have to do much better than that. LSU is going to have to be much better than 90th in defense too. And as bad as 90th is, that's still better than they were last year. LSU had one of the worst defenses in the country. Uh, scoring defense, LSU is 84th. Uh, they are giving up 24 points a game. Uh, South Carolina, their scoring offense is 88th. They're only averaging 27 points a game. Rushing defense, uh, LSU is 50, 57th, allowing 110 yards a game on the ground. That's pretty good. Uh, rush offense for South, uh, for South Carolina is 91st. Um, they are uh, averaging 130 yards on the ground. I mean, South Carolina is really not doing a, a lot of offensively. They did play better last week against Kentucky, but Old Dominion was a complete disaster. Um Pass defense, uh, LSU is 111th, allowing 262 yards. It did not help them that they liked, they the, the first game of the year they had to play against uh, USC uh, and uh, that offensive uh, attack that they've got. But and they have played a tough schedule so far, so this is not completely fair to LSU with these numbers. But passing offense for South Carolina, 122nd, 140 yards a game, and like I said, South Carolina. Is got off to a great start. They're two and zero, and and they want to continue this winning streak, and they want to continue to try to get to a bowl game this year. They've got to get that offense on a better track, uh, and I do think Lenore Sellers is going to get better as the year goes on. He's a he's a he's a young freshman. He doesn't have a lot of experience, and I think he's going to get better as this year goes on. Um, and and you know they got Rocket Sanders. He's had a pretty decent year um, so far. He's got like I think around 150 yards rushing, so uh, they got a, a decent little backfield there, and they got some decent little receivers too. They can get them the ball, uh, and and they they showed that in the Kentucky game. But anyway, turnover margin, uh, LSU is 57th. They're even on turnovers. South Carolina is plus four. They're eighth in the country. Very opportunistic. The Old Dominion game and um, in that Kentucky game, they're winning that turnover battle. They're they're creating short yardage situations for their offense to be to be able to generate points. And South Carolina is going to have to do that again this week against LSU. Um, 
penalties. LSU's been awful on penalties so far, averaging 68 yards a game in penalties, not disciplined. Um, and that, you know, going back to the USC game, that uh, that helmet to helmet hit, that that got them beat right there, just undisciplined. Uh, and uh, who knows, it would have been a long field goal kick from that distance. Who knows if that USC guy would have made that field goal or not. Uh, South Carolina, 62nd, they're averaging 52 yards a game. So <clears throat> let's let's talk about this game and, and the prediction that I've come I've come to in this game. I've went back and forth, back and forth on this game because I, when I first started thinking about this game, I thought, you know, there's such a big difference between the quarterbacks with Garrett Nussmeyer and Lenore Sellers. Um, I, I just couldn't. Uh, I just thought there's just no way South Carolina is going to be able to make up that difference. Um, but here's the problem. LSU can't run the football, and I think South Carolina is going to make them very one-dimensional. I do think they're going to get a couple turnovers here and there. And, and you know, South Carolina is going to get home a couple times, I think at least, on Garrett Nussmeyer. They're going to pressure him. They're too good of a pass rush to just absolutely be shut down in this game. I don't think South Carolina – is going to generate a lot of offense. Uh, they're going to have to have some special teams plays, which you know uh, Beamer he he you know, excels in that. Uh, defensively, they're going to have to have some turnovers, and I think they get that. I think that South Carolina is able to, to play lots out defensively in front of their home field. It does help LSU that it's a 12 o'clock kickoff game, but I just feel that LSU fans cover your ears here. I'm not. I'm going to hurt your feelings right now. I think your team is soft. Uh, the D line and the offensive line are soft. They're getting pushed around. Uh, Nichols outrushed them on the ground last week. USC had their way with uh, LSU. Uh, I can definitely see LSU winning this game, but I just feel like South Carolina is the hotter team right now. They're playing in front of their home crowd. Uh, I would feel better about this pick if it was a little bit later of a game. Uh, but if South Carolina can keep that same defensive intensity, uh, they can get Lenore Sellers in better position to make some throws, rolling him out of the pocket, uh, doing, making, letting him do things he's more comfortable in. And that defense plays at the same level that they've been playing, shutting down the run. I don't think LSU's going to run the ball at all and get after Garrett Nussmeyer. I think South Carolina's going to win 20-17. to 17, And South Carolina's going to be 3-0 and in an LSU team that I had ranked uh, and top 10 in this preseason and a team I thought was going to win 10 or 11 games is going to have two losses three games into this year. And I, I think South Carolina is going to be 3-0. and They're going to be ready to build uh, Beamer a statue down there uh, in Columbia. So uh, tough schedule so far for South Carolina. And I think at the end of the, at the, end of the day, they're going to be 3-0 and after this weekend. And what a great start to the season for South Carolina with this young team uh, and nobody gave them hope to do anything so far this year and I was one of those guys uh, but I think they're going to be 3-0 and at the end of this week. I appreciate you guys tuning in to this SEC Game of the Week and I'll talk to y'all later.